Okay, in this video we're going to look at a pretty cool function which is the gamma function and this turns out to be some sort of generalization of the factorial. So let's see how it's defined. So the gamma function is defined as follows. Gamma evaluated alpha is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha minus 1 e to the minus x dx. So in this video I want to prove two basic propositions involving the gamma function. So this first one is gamma evaluated at alpha plus 1 is alpha gamma alpha. So let's look at the proof of this. So it's a fairly easy computation. So we'll take gamma of alpha plus 1 and then by the definition this is the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha plus 1 minus 1. So that's x to the alpha e to the minus x dx. So now what we're going to do is use integration by parts so we'll let u equal x alpha. That makes du equal alpha x to the alpha minus 1 dx. Great. And then we'll take dv to be e to the minus x dx. That makes v equal minus e to the minus x. Okay, great. And now we have, this is going to be equal to u times v. So here we have minus x to the alpha e to the minus x evaluated from 0 to infinity. And then we have minus the integral of v du. So notice those minus signs are going to cancel. And we'll get plus alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, v du. So notice that's going to be x to the alpha minus 1 e to the minus x dx. So notice immediately we see that this bit right here is indeed alpha gamma alpha because this is the gamma function evaluated at alpha. Now we just have to argue why this is zero. Well, why is it zero? Because in this case we should be really taking uh, the value of alpha to be bigger than zero and so if the value of alpha is bigger than zero that means when you plug x into this you get so, sorry, uh, x equals 0 into this, you get 0, and then when you take the limit as x goes to infinity, this part goes to 0. So that makes all of this go to 0. <clears throat> Okay, good. So we've established this rule. And now something that follows very quickly from this rule is the following. So gamma of n plus 1 is n factorial. So uh, how we can do that is the following. So we'll do it by induction. So let's notice that gamma of 1 equals, so that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 1 minus 1, so that's x to the 0 which is 1, e to the minus x dx. Okay, great. But now notice that's equal to negative e to the minus x evaluated from 0 to infinity. So again, we're like playing it fast and loose a little bit right here when we really need a limit. But notice if you plug in infinity, in other words, you take the limit as the argument goes to infinity, e to the minus x is going to go to 0. And then if you plug in 1, e to the minus, sorry, if you plug in 0, e to the minus x will be 1. But notice that's the second bound of integration and we have a minus sign. So both of those are going to cancel out and we'll get a 1. Okay, great. So now let's uh, make an induction hypothesis. And the induction hypothesis that we want to make is that uh, gamma of k plus 1 equals k factorial. And then we'll consider gamma of k plus 2. And hopefully that will be k plus 2 factorial. So notice that this is equal to using this property that we have over here. So that's going to be equal to uh, k plus 1 because here we're replacing alpha with k plus 1 and then it'll be times gamma of k plus 1. Good. But now notice uh, by our induction hypothesis that's the same thing as k plus 1 times k factorial which is obviously k plus 1 factorial. Um, and then that's the end of this proof. So notice we didn't have to get into the definition of the gamma function in this induction hypothesis because we had proved it over here in this little proposition before. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at uh, another value of the gamma function. So now we want to look at another value of the gamma function. In fact, we want to look at gamma of one half. So notice, by our definition over here, that's going to be the integral from zero to infinity of x to the minus half, because it's half minus one, of e to the minus x dx. Okay, so we want to take a u substitution to simplify this into something a little bit more familiar. So let's let u equal uh, x to the one half, in other words, the square root of x. And notice that du equals one half x to the minus one half, and then x equals u squared. Okay, great. So uh, now notice this bit right here, x to the minus half dx, so that is going to be exactly 2 du. And then notice that this bit in here can be replaced with u squared. Okay, so that's going to change this entire thing to twice the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus u squared du. Okay, good. And then notice that since u squared is an even function and e to the minus u squared is an even function, we can write this as um, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus u squared du. And now we're going to take the trick to square this and take its square root. So this is going to be the same thing as the square root of the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus u squared du. Great, but now we can write and then all of this squared. But now we can write each of these with a different variable. Maybe we'll choose x for one of them and y for another one. I know I've already used x here, but that's okay. Um, so here we'll get this is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus y squared dy. Okay, good. But now notice that's going to be the square root of the double integral over all of R2 of e to the minus x squared plus y squared and then dA where we have our area differential um, in R2. Okay, good. And now we're going to switch to polar coordinates. And then recall in polar coordinates, we have dA equals r dr d theta. And we also have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So that's going to give us the square root of, so we have the integral from 0 uh, to 2 pi of the integral from 0 to infinity of r e to the minus r squared dr d theta. Okay, good. And then finally, we can see that this outer integral, which depends on theta, and this inner integral are separate. So we can calculate the outer integral, and notice the outer integral will be equal to 2 pi. And then also notice that via a pretty simple uh, u substitution, so let's maybe do w. So if we let w equal um, r squared, that inner integral is going to simplify to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 half e to the minus w dw which is an integral we've done um, previously in this video. So notice that that integral will give us 1 half, the outer integral gives us 2 pi, we've got a square root around the whole thing, so we get the square root of pi as the answer. So the gamma function evaluated a half is the square root of pi.